Chapter 5 takes a look at process costing. In this chapter, we are going to calculate the product cost using process costing. Chapter 3, we looked at job costing. Now we're going to take a look at process costing. We know that companies can use two methods to come up with their product cost. The first one is job costing, the second one is process costing. Job costing is used by companies that produce unique items. Um, things like airplanes, custom home builders, appliance manufacturers, um, a lot of service companies such as accountants, hospitals, they use job costing. This is used whenever each job requires a different amount of resources than the next one. Process costing is used by companies that mass produce items such as uh, pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals um, are things like pills, um, petroleum products, um, cereal, any mass-produced item, those companies use process costing. Going back to Chapter 3, companies that use job costing accumulated their cost by each job. They had a job cost record and every time they incurred cost on a particular job, they would trace those uh, costs to that job cost record. Once they did that, they would allocate manufacturing overhead to the job cost record. A company using process costing, on the other hand, doesn't need to do that because all they do is produce the same item all day long. All they do is produce the same item in mass quantities. So instead of doing a job cost record, how do they accumulate costs? They accumulate costs by the departments or the processes they have. So if they've got multiple steps in their production process, they separate all of these processes into departments and they say, well, for this particular department, let's see what all the costs that went in. Then they divide that those costs by the output and they come up with a cost for that particular department. And we'll take a look at how that works in a minute. It does not matter which method your company uses, the product cost is always the sum of direct material, which is traced, direct labor, which is also traced, and manufacturing overhead, which is allocated to the product. And we all talked about how to allocate manufacturing overhead to product. You use your predetermined overhead rate multiplied by the actual amount of allocation base used. Um, you could allocate manufacturing overhead using a plant-wide rate, a departmental overhead rate, or in activity-based costing rates. So the similarities between these two is that your product cost is always going to have the three components, direct material, direct labor, plus manufacturing overhead. The differences are how they accumulate costs. Job costing accumulates it by the job cost record, production, and process costing accumulates by the production process. Well, what does production process mean? Let's take a look. Let's assume that we have a, um, a potato chips manufacturer. Let's say that their preparation, the cooking process, their whole process of manufacturing these potato chips um, can be simplified into three processes or three departments. The department that prepares the potatoes, the next department which cooks the potatoes, and then the final department where they pack the chips and ship them off. So in your potato chips plant you will have one department for preparation. Once the potatoes are prepared and cut they will be transferred to the cooking department where they will be deep fried. Once they're deep fried you've transferred them over to the packaging department to be packed and shipped. So this particular company would allocate all their costs based on their department. So for example, for the preparation department, they will collect all the costs that they spend for the preparation department. These companies accumulate their cost using a working process inventory account for each department they have. So this particular company has three departments or three processes they will have three separate working process inventory accounts and costs will flow from sequentially from one in, uh, working process inventory account to the next. So this company has three 
we have three working process inventory accounts. You'll have a working process inventory account for preparation. You'll have a working process inventory account for cooking. And you will have a working in process inventory for packaging. And cost will flow from working process inventory of preparation to cooking to packaging. And we'll see how that's done next. Remember, a company that uses process costing has as many working process inventory accounts as they have departments or process. So if the real free to lay company, uh, company's products go through 50 departments before the finished product comes out, how many working process inventory accounts will they have? The answer would be 50. If they have 50 processes or departments that they go through, there will be 50 working process inventory accounts. Going back to our simple example, we had three processes. So in our preparation process, we would add direct materials, direct labor, allocate some manufacturing overhead. When all that is done in the preparation department, we transfer those costs out to our cooking department, where we will add more direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Sometimes some of these departments may not have all these components. For example, in our example of um, potato chips, they may not have any more direct materials to add, but they will add direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead will have things like indirect materials, such as cooking oil or seasoning um, added to this particular production process. Then once all that is done, they will transfer it over to the packaging department where again they will add any direct materials, direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Once packaging department's done with their product, the production process is complete, then the products will get be, be transferred to finished goods inventory. Finally, when those uh, goods are sold, they will get transferred to cost of goods sold. So the flow of products for a process costing company is it will come out of raw material inventory into the first pro production process department, which is preparation. And then it will go from one working process inventory to the other. Again, it will go through as many working process inventory accounts as the company has departments. And from the final department, or process, which is packaging in this case, it will go to finished goods inventory. And then once products are sold, it will go to cost of goods sold. We said that these companies accumulate cost by department. So let's look at how the costing works. What we will do is we will look at how much cost went into each department. Let's say that each department incurred um, well, the preparation department incurred $1,000, cooking department incurred $5,000, and the packaging department incurred $3,000 during our period. Let's say our period is a month. Let's assume that during this month we produced 2,000 pounds of potato chips. So each department processed 2,000 pounds of potato chips. How do we find the total product cost? Well, you know that the cost of preparation is 50 cents per pound. How did we get that? We took total cost of 1,000 incurred in the preparation department divided by the 2,000 units that we produced, 2,000 pounds that we produced, giving you 50 cents per pound for the cost in the preparation department. Similarly, for cooking department, we get 250 a pound, which is the $5,000 incurred divided by 2,000 pounds. For the packaging department, we get $1.50 giving us a total cost of 450 for our process for the entire process so our cost is 450 which is a sum of preparation cost which is right here cooking cost which is right here plus our packaging cost you just sum up 3 and your cost is $4.50 per pound of potato chips let's take a closer look at our preparation department in our preparation department, what did we have? We had 2,000 pounds of inputs and we had 2,000 pounds of output. We said that the total cost for this department was $1,000. So we ended up calculating that 
this particular uh, department or process cost us 50 cents per pound of potatoes process, processed through this department. Now, that would be great if it worked this way. However, things are a little bit more complicated in real life. What is more likely to happen is that this company will start off with 2,000 pounds of potatoes. They would have processed 1,700 and completed and transferred out to your uh, cooking department. However, at the end of the period, you could probably have 300 pounds of incomplete ending work in process. We know that we incurred $1,000 in during this production process. However, we have a problem now. We've got two different types of output, so we cannot calculate what our cost per output is. Earlier, it was easy. We had 2,000 pounds going in, 2,000 pounds going out. We incurred $1,000, so we just calculated our cost per output. However, here we have two different types of output, so we cannot do this calculation. What you have is you have to figure out what the cost of the completed and transferred out units are, and we also have to calculate the cost of our ending work in process inventory. How do we do this? We have to find a way to bring our output to the same type of units and we will do this by calculating what we call equivalent units for our products uh, for the units in ending working process and that will be the next section